I'm Sharon Omoza and I'm joining from Nairobi, Kenya. Welcome to this session on my Libre, Community Driven Map Box GL Fork by Peter Predal. The, the session is going to take 20 minutes, including the Q&A session. Thank you, enjoy the session. Welcome to the presentation about MapLibre, an open source uh, driven uh, project, uh, which is in fact Mapbox GL fork. Uh, my name is Peter Pridal. Uh, I am the founder uh, and team lead behind MapTiler pro uh, product. And uh, I'm also a member of the steering committee of this open source project with many other people uh, around. Uh, there is Yuri from Elastic, uh, there are people like Marcel uh, from Ware Group, Luke, Seth, uh, Michael, people from, from Amazon, from Facebook, people who care about this project and uh, who are pushing it forward. Um, what is MapLibre? MapLibre is a mapping library similar to Leaflet and Open Layers and other uh, online tools for developers. Uh, which in fact allows you to create uh, applications in the web or mobile applications showing and rendering maps, such as those maps in OpenStreetMap. It's a community-driven fork of uh, Mapbox uh, stack uh, because recently Mapbox has decided to restrict uh, the usage of their, of their tools and that's, uh, that's why this project was created. Uh, in the same moment, it's an 100% uh, open source reference for the vector tile rendering. Uh, and uh, it remains to be BSD license with fully open um, governance uh, behind the project. So the decisions are done by the community. Uh, it, ha it happens to be quite popular. So uh, even though it's just about half a year old, it has collected o over uh, one or 1,800 stars on GitHub, and it's still gaining the traction. Uh, if you want to read more or get more information about the project, the easiest way is to visit the website of the project, uh, maplibre.org, uh, where you can find all the details. Uh, you may ask why we are speaking here uh, at OpenStreetMap conference about this project. It's very much related to OpenStreetMap because Mapbox was one of the of the providers who. Uh, show OpenStreetMap data in their products, and they have developed these amazing stacks. Uh, and they, they put it online as open source, and it's heavily used by the community. Um, their engineers are, are really great. Uh, we highly all appreciate uh, what they have done in the past. Uh, and the, the last decision was really a bit of pain uh, for many because they restricted what you can do. Uh, still, uh, the, the, uh, the stack is here and it makes an open alternative to Google Maps API and other completely proprietary products. And in combination with OpenStreetMap data, it really solves the problem of distributing maps, choose different uh, products and different uh, applications for many developers. Uh, therefore, uh, the, the map libre is in fact a uh, way how to show the maps uh, from uh, projects like Open Map Tiles or from other commercial mapping uh, providers such as MapTiler or, or others. You may ask, what is the story behind map libre? Uh, it all started or it was triggered by the license change uh, uh, announced on uh, December 8 uh, last year, 2020. Uh, where, where Mapbox has decided to limit uh, the license and switch from BSD, 100% open source approved license, uh, to their own terms, uh, which, which in fact uh, doesn't allow you to serve the maps from your own server. Uh, they doesn't, uh, doesn't allow you to, uh, to choose uh, what provider you load with without paying for every single displaying and load of the library uh, in a web browser to Mapbox, to a single, single, uh, single entity. Uh, this has really been kind of surprise for the entire community and uh, something where previously open source project with an open license and an amazing technical uh, development of the entire Mapbox team has been uh, closed down. And this surprise really triggered uh, the birth of the MapLibre. MapLibre is in fact uh, combination of map library reborn, uh, but it's also uh, map uh, and libre as the freedom, uh, because the freedom are a very important part of, uh, of the library itself. Uh, and in fact, just the day after 
uh, through Hacker News and Twitter, uh, a community gathered, multiple forks were created, and then uh, we just talked together and agreed to uh, to uh, set the memorandum, agree on, on rules of what, what the project should have inside and how it should be uh, led, how it should be managed, uh, and uh, what are the, the rules which we want to all follow, and we agreed on this, we agreed on the name, and that's one. That's how how the entire project was was created. Um, in fact, in fact, uh, the memorandum is still online, so you can you can have a look at it. And an important part is that it's a project which is not controlled by a single uh, legal entity by a single company. It's really uh, driven by the community. Uh, the main part of the project uh, is JavaScript rendering, uh, so MapLibre GLJS which is a uh, fork of Mapbox, GLJS, allowing you a hardware-accelerated rendering of the maps uh, in a 2D or 2.5D, so you can tilt and pan and rotate the maps uh, uh, with very, uh, very fluent feeling and uh, nice, nice animations. Uh, and uh, it runs in all, uh, all the latest browsers, in the all the latest web browsers, uh, and supports plugin and, uh, and other, uh, other features which can be extended. So the functionality of the, of the core tool can be extended with plugins and, and other, uh, custom written code. In fact, it's pretty easy to write the code. You can in, in about 22 lines, you can write a complete uh, viewer for, uh, for the mapping application. Uh, so, so, um, it's, it's, uh, Quite easy for anybody who is starting uh, with the maps to jump, jump on and get this fluent and nice uh, mapping visualization in in his website or in his uh, application. Uh, the Map Libre has also ported the latest version uh, of the of the Mapbox uh, uh, documentation, which uh, thanks to the uh, previous license and uh, the willingness of the Mapbox engineers has been released as well. Before the close down, as as the as the op under open uh, license, uh, so we we have basically taken exactly the latest version of the open source and decided by a group of communities to uh, let it forward. Um, in the documentation, you can find many examples and uh, you can really start quite quite easily. Next to the JavaScript uh, implementation, which runs in a web browser, there is also a native implementation in C++. Uh, which is great for development of the native mobile application. So it's in fact a uh, fully open source alternative to uh, proprietary SDKs uh, such as Google Maps SDK on Android or uh, uh, the map kit from Apple on iOS, uh, where you as a developer completely control what is displayed and how it is displayed and you can change anything what you see and also deploy it on the platforms which are not controlled by these two enterprises on the market. Um, it's it's uh, implementing the same rendering styling language. So this, the, once you develop uh, look and feel of your map and you display it in the JavaScript in the web browser, you can bring this into the native mobile applications and it will look exactly the same. So the the, the implementation is um, is equal uh, in a in a sense of look and feel um, and. Uh, Mapbox, in fact, has closed down this part already back in uh, April 2020. In that time, uh, our team at MapTyler uh, decided to uh, to work on a fork and uh, continue to improve uh, this SDK. And uh, now, uh, when uh, uh, when the MapLibre uh, project has started, we have decided to contribute all our work uh, over the last uh, half of the year. Uh, back to the project so, so the community can, uh, can improve it further and the base is there uh, despite this, this delay. Um, next to the mobile applications, it's also great for, uh, for embedded devices, hardware navigation, uh, for server rendering and other use cases. Um, if you write with uh, MapLibre on Android, you can use the Kotlin and Java language. If you are developing on iOS, uh, there is Swift and Objective-C. Uh, there are other bindings for the C++ 14 uh, code, in fact, so you can, uh, you can improve it. Uh, you, you can use it with the language of your choice, choose the bindings which are compiled for the different platforms. Uh, there is one significant difference. There is no telemetry. 
So no tracking of the users. It's an open source project which doesn't deliver any location information about the users to any single uh, party outside. Uh, so, so you have full privacy and, uh, and uh, uh, open sourceness, freedom to do what you want with the maps. And the users can be also ensured that, that there is no issues with the privacy. Um, another huge improvement recently pushed into the native is from uh, is contribution from the Amazon developers, uh, where they have implemented uh, rendering through uh, Apple Metal language. So uh, uh, the library is going to be supported in all the future iOS devices, uh, and uh, it will run on iPads and and iPhones uh, in the upcoming versions. Uh, to write the code is almost almost uh, the same uh, same simplicity uh, as in the JavaScript. It's it's as easy as in the JavaScript. So with with about 30 lines of code, you can develop your own native mobile application. This is example on Android, and on iOS it's even shorter. Uh, so so you can try it. Um, because the the library was developed for half of the year. Uh, inside of the MapTiler team, uh, we have pushed uh, documentation uh, originally to MapTiler.com uh, slash docs, where you can read about the SDK, and it may eventually uh, be published at MapLibre uh, as well, but now you find it, find it at this URL. Uh, you may ask what is the status of the project, what is the, on the roadmap, and uh, we have set with the with the group uh, behind the project um, a set of tasks which were identified as the most critical. Um, this was starting uh, the engagement with the community and uh, having setting up regular meetings with the people to discuss what are the next steps and validate and, and have kind of uh, deadlines for us to to deliver what what we discussed. Uh, there is a, a steering committee uh, behind the project, so the decisions are discussed by multiple people. Uh, there is a board which, which uh, controls any financial contribution, which are very transparent and publicly readable. Um, we have also uh, identified technical things which are really important for the project, such as automated tests, continuous integration on GitHub. So whoever contributes, we are sure that the project is stable and uh, the releases are also automated. So for the entire communities, it's in fact quite, quite easy to, uh, to uh, add a feature or propose a pull request implementing something new. And uh, we are sure that the entire project uh, doesn't break with this contribution through the set of tests. Um, there is a new website and the documentation published, uh, so, so you can check it at map, maplibre.org and uh, the great contribution uh, around iOS Metal. Um, the, what will come next is the question of who really needs what from the library. There are many things discussed, uh, which, which may contain 3D terrain, custom coordinates, uh, such as different IPSG codes, um, PDF export, uh, closer integration with leaflet open layers and other other things. Uh, it all depends who is going to be working on the on the contributions. Where are the pain points for the different players who are using uh, the library? And you are very welcome to come up with your idea or uh, jump on one of our meetings uh, or propose uh, on on Slack or on GitHub issue your own idea and synchronize with the other teams. Uh, so so uh, uh, there is no duplication of the work and the project can be improved. Uh, one of the things which is really cool, which I want to show you, is, uh, is in fact uh, a contribution from uh, Toursprung. There is a pull request for uh, 3D rendering uh, of the map where, where the terrain is re really uh, brought in uh, to the uh, previously only 2D or 2.5D library, so, so the work continues. You can review the pull request and uh, have a look at the code there, and hopefully this will, this will bubble into production as well after, after it passes all the tests and the quality control checks. Um, so thank you, Toursprung, for this contribution. As I said, uh, it's a uh, community-driven project uh, with reviews on GitHub, discussion on Slack channel. Uh, it's uh, not an or organically grown project, uh, which brings new challenges because there is no strong leader and, uh, and the community is created uh, because of this event, uh, which, which happened in December. Uh, 
but, uh, but in the same moment, we apply the traditional approaches on the open source project with the steering committee. Uh, and we really care about the democracy behind the project and the decisions which are delegated to the, the people who, who really contribute to the project. Uh, so it's, it's a, an open community where anybody can join. Um, us usually it starts with like contribution discussion on the, on the Slack or, or GitHub issue. And then uh, you're very welcome to join the steering committee, which is a video call basically with the others. If you have an idea which needs to be synchronized and, and discussed in more, uh, details. Lessons learned. Uh, building community is a hard work. Uh, it's, it takes time. Uh, the more, the more structure uh, in decision, uh, the more time is required for, for the project to move on. Uh, in the same moment, uh, I believe for this project, and I'm not the only one, uh, for this project, it is an essential thing uh, to have. Uh, and uh, therefore, we put a lot of effort from the different people to set it up that way. Uh, without community, there is no project. And, uh, one thing which we have learned is also asking for contributions is uh, much more valuable for than asking for for money so uh, in a, an open source project it's really uh, it's really essential um, in the beginning uh, we were looking to join one of the big big foundations we were talking uh, with linux foundations and and other in the field uh, because of the legal protection uh, but as, as, a, as a result of, of this research, um, we have decided that currently for the project, this is not a critical part. It's more important to have the technical infrastructure set up and uh, traction in the project. Uh, and the, the legal protection for, for this, it's in fact most essential to set the rules for the contributions where people are not backporting uh, the code, which, is, which has limited license into our library. And for this, we want to set also tests on continuous integration on GitHub. Um, it would be amazing if you, if you, uh, find this project interesting for what you do and you join. It's in fact the first step to, uh, to, to join the project is start to use it. Uh, it's pretty easy to migrate from Mapbox to, uh, to Maplibre in two lines of code. You can, you, if you are using like NPM compiled, compiled, uh, Java, JavaScript application, um, the, the migration is really easy. Uh, there are bindings available as well for, uh, React and for, uh, Vue and, uh, the documentation helps as well. Um, you are highly encouraged to, to study the code, uh, check how the, how the project is built. Uh, there is a vibrant community on the, on the Slack, so people are helping each other. Uh, we have, we have issues on the GitHub and a set of tasks where, where, uh, people can, uh, can contribute and, uh, the roadmap which was described. So, uh, if you are a coder, the best is just have a look at the code and, and improve it. Uh, if you are not and you are just learning, it would be amazing if you help us improve the documentation and how to's. So the, the best donation you can do is in fact your time and involvement in the project um, and help others uh, with whatever skills you have. If the, if the community grows, the project grows as well and, uh, and uh, everybody will be happier with the outcome. Um, if you are not a coder or you don't want to donate your time, it would be amazing, especially if you are a company which regularly uses this project and for whom the project is critical. Uh, if you, if you uh, decide to contribute with money, uh, so, so uh, uh, there can be people paid uh, for maintaining and guiding the community. Uh, and uh, uh, we have set up already GitHub sponsors and Open Collective. If you are a company which really use the project regularly, it's, uh, it would be amazing if you could uh, do monthly payment. Uh, so we can hire a part time, uh, part time people or, or, uh, uh, boost the, the involvement with the community, uh, through these donations. Summary. We have learned what is Maplibre. Uh, you have heard the story behind the project, uh, learned a bit how the project is set up and governed, who are the people behind. Uh, there are different, different sub projects as well, such as the React bindings and, and others, the leaflet, leaflet library using Maplibre. Uh, there is roadmap, 
a couple of a couple of uh, things on how to join the project and how to contribute uh, were discussed as well. So I'm uh, really keen to hear what are your questions. Thank you very much. That's super interesting and amazing. Thank you, Peter, for that an amazing talk. We will head straight to the Q and A session. Uh, we have lots of questions lined up. Uh, the first one is. Um, uh, why Amazon Amazon has an interest in MapLibra SDK? Uh, do you have any explanation about that? Or do they want to do they want to set up map tiling service in the Amazon Web Services? Uh, um, yes, yeah, the different companies who are involved in the in the project uh, are typically running uh, services on maps. So so Amazon is one of them. You can check that online. Uh, the others are uh, are also running uh, internal mapping services. I believe Amazon is not using OpenStreetMap currently. Uh, it's a partnership with S3 and here Maps, um, but uh, but uh, it may change in the future. Uh, okay, that's great. Uh, the next question is on: um, Are there any plans to improve internalization support in Map Library? Uh, as I said in the presentation, uh, it's a community-driven project. So if you have uh, a particular issue, uh, just submit it to GitHub issues, discuss it with the community. There is OSM uh, Slack channel, uh, OSM US uh, uh, room on MapLibre. So you can join and discuss with others there. And uh, the project is really open to various kind of contributions and uh, open to, uh, to merge in uh, the changes which people need. Oh, that's great. Uh, the other question is, uh, which vector map tile server provider companies are on board with map library? Uh, on board, uh, uh, if you mean, if you mean uh, who is using it, uh, it's really different, different kind of uh, entities involved. You can check the GitHub. Um, it's from, uh, from a map tiler to uh, Jog uh, to Toursprung, as I mentioned, Stadia, uh, there are also uh, bigger companies involved with Microsoft, Amazon, uh, Elastic, and others, but uh, in, they use it into a different extent. Uh, and uh, they are applying uh, or supporting it and recommending it to their customers either directly or as part of their own wrappers or uh, as, they, as they need it. So, uh, so it's really anybody can join, basically. So, so if you join, uh, then then uh, you will be on the list as well. But we, in fact, don't have any list currently. It's perhaps you can like to, to list uh, everything on the website. The website is now online. That's a, that's a new since the recording. Uh, it's it's at maplibre.org. So, if you go there, you can you can check the documentation and links to individual projects, including how to join the conversation. Great. Uh, someone has an interesting idea, and uh, because since we are looking for such a tool for our project, uh, he was asking where can uh, can you discuss more. And uh, I had you mention there is the Git GitLab, um, there's a GitLab, and there is also the Slack community, and maybe you can also expound on that. If someone has an interesting idea that wants to share, where best can you like to discuss on the ideas? Mm -hmm. So the best is if you start at maplibre.org, there you find the different links to individual projects. There is one project in JavaScript and another uh, for the native implementation for Android, iOS, and a compiled application in C++. Uh, and on the website, you find also a link uh, how to join the Slack channel because you have to be kind of invited with a link. So, so if you go to the website, there is a link where you submit your, your Slack ID or, or email. And you can join uh, the room uh, at uh, at OSMUS uh, Slack uh, uh, channel and uh, and uh, discuss there with different people. Uh, the best uh, the best way how to start or propose the idea is in fact make an issue or make a prototype uh, in the related project on GitHub. So uh, so you you can uh, propose the, the the stuff you want to have or implement. Uh, on GitHub directly with the issue uh, or tickets basically there, and then uh, discuss it with the other people uh, on the Slack and, and, and continue on the comments uh, on the GitHub. Oh, great. Another question. Is it possible to make server-side rendered raster tiles with MapLibre? Uh, 
or is it only client side rendering possible? Uh, there is the C++ renderer, um, the native uh, project, which is part of Maplibre. Uh, so it is ported, it has different wrappers. If you need uh, directly uh, the, uh, the different, like, complete projects for rendering. We, we have developed the open source tile server GL rendering component in the past, uh, which is kind of a prototype of how to how to do that. Uh, internally, with my own team, we are working on MapTeller server, uh, which is now using MapLibre uh, in, the, in the backend, uh, but but you can uh, uh, try different libraries or write on top of MapLibre your own serving in any language you, you require or you want uh, to deploy on your infrastructure. So yes, there is render in C++ where you can render raster tiles on server side. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, the next question, are there any features that are only in the map box version apart from Fog? Um, well, the, the, are, uh, the two libraries has split in the moment when MapLibre was launched. Uh, and uh, there are some new features in the JavaScript. Uh, the 3D is being re-implemented. It's in a pull request. Uh, on the native side, we have, we have uh, like MBTLs rendering directly uh, present in the library uh, on the C++ part on the native. Um, so, uh, it, there, are, there are different things which are being proposed, discussed, and uh, you can check uh, roadmap.maplibre.org for the ideas which, which are like uh, drafted and proposed, and of course the issues on the individual projects on GitHub uh, to see what the community is working on. Uh, there are small things already done, uh, so the two libraries starts to deviate. Uh, and uh, we believe we believe uh, there are going to be more changes coming in, especially on the JSON styling language. We were discussing the custom coordinate systems and the other stuff I mentioned in the presentation. Thank you. Uh, this is from Tobias Zwick. Um, he asks, uh, does the map Libre SDK support adding, removing, clicking on markers on the map efficiently? Uh, like potentially tens, tens of thousands of markers. Uh, I wonder if this could replace tangrams for street complete. Oh, both uh, both Mapbox already supported that, and Maplibre now continues to do that. So you can display easily um, large number of pins or markers on top of map with the vector tiles or with the different approaches. Uh, which the library supports. It's a very, very high performance, and uh, uh, it displays uh, the vector form of the OpenStreetMap itself. So the four billion features uh, are rendered directly in the browser. You can easily include anything your own uh, application wants to display and, and integrate directly with the map or render it as just as another layer. Uh, map tiles or another projects uh, which are which are doing the processing in the vector tiles. Uh, the client-side rendering of the markers is possible as well, of course. It's not as easy as with Pflat, but uh, uh, you can you can use GeoJSON and uh, with vector tiles, either client-side or server-side optimized, uh, you can uh, you can uh, render really large number of, of pins or markers on top of a map and do any kind of interaction you, you need in your application. Uh, great. Uh, the last question we have here is, um, there only seems to be documentation for MapLibre native on iOS and Android. Is there also support for native Linux on 64-bit uh, or 86-bit? Check the source code. The source code is the big, big, best documentation. Uh, we have pushed for the iOS and Android on our side. Uh, so that's where the contribution, including the documentation, has been has been pushed. Uh, but the library is the latest uh, latest uh, fork of the open source version of Mapbox back from uh, April. Um, so so you can compile on Linux, you can compile on on a 64-bit, and and other libraries, uh, other uh, operating systems, and and different uh, environments where you want to compile. Uh, so so it really depends on you. Uh, how do you want to compile it? as a library with your application. Um, 
the C++ uh, 14 code is, is portable, uh, so, so you can bring it to any platform you want with a bit of effort. Um, check the code, check, check the source code and GitHub repository of the native for this part. from Stefan Keller. He asks, are OSM IDs handled explicitly or separately? Uh, like that's something he'd prefer. Like remember they have been removed in MBGL, Mapbox GL in an earlier version. Uh, I believe the IDs are really um, related to the vector tiles. Uh, MapLibre is, a, a, is a uh, visualization component for the vector tiles or not only vector tiles, but um, but it's not directly bound to OpenStreetMap. You can use OpenStreetMap data, but you can use also natural earth data or any other kind of data which you turn into vector tiles or into GeoJSONs and display it the way you want. So the identifiers inside of the OpenStreetMap are not bound to the library. Uh, it's your decision uh, how you structure uh, the vector form of the maps and where you push the identifiers. Um, if you if you refer to uh, open map tiles, then in open map tiles we have in the schema uh, the identifiers pushed in the multiple layers, uh, so you can you can in fact get uh, real time interaction with the objects where uh, queries can be done from the vector tiles. So the, on the client side, people click on a points of interest like a shop or something or or a town. They receive the OSM ID, they can make another query to the OSM servers and retrieve additional information from either OSM tags uh, or from uh, uh, Wikidata uh, directly from the vector tiles. But it's a question of how the vector tiles are done, not how the library is prepared. The library allows that, but, but you have to give extra care for the IDs to be exposed. Uh, great. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, everyone, for joining this session. That was an interactive session.